Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen. You're listening to Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring Radio. And uh, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. And I just saw a new therapist. I am happy that I switched from a female to a male therapist. And I'm so um, grateful that I did that. He, There was some synchronicity that happened. I showed up. I was a little bit um, stressed out, had some... Uh, Feeling of OCD, feeling of worry, feeling of anxiety. And um, I brought my art book. I published a book called Art, Identity, and the Sacred. And it's a 140-page book with different chapters of uh, self-portraits, animal portraits, visual haiku, urban decay, uh, various different shapes and textures and colors that I see. And my art is sort of a container that I put all my scattered energy into. And it's kind of like my life raft. I think that art and music have kind of really helped me feel more safe and secure in the world. And like I have an identity. And I will say that the therapist I switched to, I mean, I had another therapist who I liked, but something didn't quite click. And I switched They assigned me this male therapist because he was an actor for 20 years and I I told them that I liked improvisational style therapy that was kind of artistic minded and maybe a little spiritual in its approach and holistic and eclectic and tailored to the client, which I think all good therapists probably do sort of tailor it. You know, there's no one size fits all with therapeutic um, relationships and healing from trauma and healing from whatever your issues are. Everybody has some issue, whether it's mental or physical. My physical health is pretty good. It's emotional health that I, that I have a challenge with at times. And so this new therapist I'm seeing is, he, he was an actor for 20 years, and I think he also writes. And he gave me a homework assignment of writing a one-paragraph sort of autobiographical synopsis of who I think I am at this particular time in my life. I'm 48 years old, born in San Diego, California in 1968. I'm the only child of two interesting people. Let me just say, oh, my phone is ringing to be continued. So I'm hoping that this will work okay. If I combine these two tracks... So I am an only child of two parents who met in college and had me very young. And maybe I'll do a synopsis of my life. I talked with my therapist today about what I want to do in therapy. I've been in and out of therapy for over 20 years. And and there's pros and cons to that. So I am 48 years old and I live by myself with my cat. I thankfully have a boyfriend. I've had like a pretty stormy love life. And this is just like, you know, me sharing about my life right now. That's just what I feel like doing. I might share some music and poetry later on. Uh, So I was raised in a certain way. And there were pros and cons to how I was raised. And uh, my therapist wanted me to write like a paragraph. And okay, wait, I'm getting all scattered. So my therapist today brought up Temple Grandin. She's the autistic woman and she was um, her, her main philosophy, which could apply to helping anyone, not just autistic people and parents of autistic people, but anyone, especially people who are troubled and who have problems, who have autism or who are extremely dyslexic or have social anxiety disorder or some kind of phobia or you know, whatever your frailty is, it's easy, I think, for people to get carried away and caught up in fixating on what's wrong with somebody, on fixating what makes them weird and what makes them different in a negative way. And Temple Grandin uses, used the um, analogy or the example, not analogy, literally the example of a little boy who was autistic and he couldn't tie his shoes. He just could not tie his shoes. His brain just didn't understand how to learn how to tie shoes. And yet he was very good at math, like very, very gifted at math, perhaps not very socially functional, perhaps couldn't tie his shoes. So (laughs) Temple Grandin said, hey, 
His parents need to stop worrying about trying to get him to tie his shoes, get him Velcro shoes, get him slip on shoes and help him with his math. So basically the message is no matter who you are, if you have certain gifts, make sure to recognize those and try to build those up and nurture those. And whatever your flaws are, whatever is wrong with you that makes you frustrated and challenged and scared in the world, try to learn how to cope with that if you can and get the help and support you need in coping with what your deficits are, but emphasize and nurture and get help really with bringing out your gifts and nurturing, practicing if you're good at math or science or art, music, theater, dance. Uh, some people are really good with animals. I am particularly good with animals. I am particularly good with plants and animals. And I'm really better at being alone than I am at being with other people. I do have a boyfriend and I see him a few times a week, but I do choose to live by myself in my apartment with my cat. And I think part of why I'm such a good figure model for artists is that I'm comfortable being nude in front of people. But I also really like sitting still and being quiet and going within and sort of like meditating, daydreaming, spacing out, losing track of time. In fact, I've even gotten in trouble at other jobs for sort of being a little spaced out and not really wanting to make a lot of eye contact and be really helpful with people. So like I'm not particularly a good salesperson. I used to be a cashier off and on for years at different places, but I, and I'm pretty good at that. I'm pretty good at ringing people up quickly and being friendly and saying hello and goodbye and thank you. But I don't really like a lot of chit chat and I don't really like being a salesperson. My favorite part, actually, I worked at a Xerox place my favorite part, I was the cashier and I did color copies and laminating. But my favorite thing was when somebody would come in that needed extra help. You know, I was always good at being extra kind to somebody with a, like a blind person that had a seeing eye dog or people who couldn't speak English that would come in and, and needed to get Xeroxes and they didn't know how to do that. I would teach them how to use the machine clear paper jams. So my point is, I found out that I was really good at being extra kind and, and uh, having patience, working with handicapped people, working with um, uh, little kids who were trying to do something on, you know, make Xeroxes and having a hard time. So I actually really like being extra kind to people. So I was going to say I had a good therapy session today and I am motivated to tell a synopsis of my life story. I am 48 years old. I'm thinking when I'm in my 60s, I'll write a memoir and turn it into a book. Um, I grew up in San Diego. Uh, my dad wrote comedy. He wrote comedy, not professionally, but he always had like a, a yellow legal pad with him and he used to write comedy and write jokes and test it out on waitresses and test it out on me. And he was a tennis teacher, so he would tell it to his fellow tennis people and, and test it out and see if it was funny. And he has kind of an off the wall, intelligent sense of humor, kind of like George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Steve Martin, those kinds of comedians. My dad actually met Jonathan Winters and had lunch with him. That's a whole nother story because he grew up in Southern California and my grandfather introduced him to some interesting people. The other thing is uh, my mom is a visual artist and she works with clay and metal and she's very inspired by nature and Advaita Vedanta non-duality and Krishnamurti. And she taught me about Hunderwasser and this Indian philosopher guy named uh, um, Krishnamurti who has since passed away. And Hunderwasser is a painter who didn't, and a philosopher who didn't believe in straight lines and he believed that architecture and paintings should not have straight lines because in nature there aren't really straight lines. Things like that. So I was basically, to make a long story short, I was raised by parents who are, I'm going to turn my there. I was raised by parents who are kind of alternative. I wouldn't really say my parents are hippies though, even now. Uh, they're not really, they don't really fit into any kind of category. Both my parents, they divorced when I was four. They met at Arizona State University and they divorced when I was four. 
they weren't really meant to be married together. But I really think that I was meant to be born. My my parents are both kind of altruistic, highly intelligent, sensitive, um, animal lovers. My dad was on a tennis scholarship. My mom was on an academic scholarship. So my dad uh, wrote comedy and he wrote folk music. He was inspired by Gordon Lightfoot, Simon and Garfunkel, Bob Dylan, um, the Everly Brothers, you know, Joan Baez, people like that, folk, folk singers and intelligent songwriters who wrote smart lyrics. He also loves Frank Sinatra and really good, beautiful melodies. And he's really into the soundtracks of movies, the orchestrated, you know, he even knows the names of the composers of the soundtracks of movies. So my dad is really, really musical person and really good with language and kind of a good writer. And he was a tennis teacher. So he was sort of like creative writing, comedy, music, and he sang and played guitar, sort of taught himself and recorded some things. One of his songs almost became a thing, theme, theme song to a B-movie in the 70s, but then they changed their mind and my dad got kind of discouraged. But it's just kind of fascinating. Maybe I'll play one of my dad's songs, actually. I think I will later in the show. I'll play one of my dad's songs. There's one called Slow Down and one called Feather that my dad, his name is Gus Kringen. He wrote songs and recorded them. And I have a couple, they're not super high quality recordings, but I'm so happy I have these recordings. And my dad is still alive. He's about 70 or 71. And I won't say a lot because he's a private person, but I'm just happy that my dad wrote music and comedy and was, he's an amazing tennis player. He still is an amazing tennis player, very athletic guy. So he's very fit and healthy and my mom is, um, my dad's kind of a city person. My mom's kind of a more of live in the woods kind of person. And she's into Eastern philosophy, Advaita Vedanta, non-duality. It's a form of Hinduism, but it's very scientific. It's not really very um, religious in terms of superstitious religious beliefs or gods or goddesses. It's more like scientific and like direct experience with reality and consciousness and matter and quantum physics and all that jazz. So I grew up with these parents who divorced when I was four, saw my dad on weekends in San Diego. And basically, maybe I'll dive more deeply into my autobiography on a different episode, but I think I'm going to play a couple songs that my dad wrote and recorded, Gus Kringen, and I might do that next. And let me just do like a synopsis of my life. I grew up in San Diego when I was nine. My mom decided that we would move up to Washington, would be island. We lived uh, on a sort of in an art commune for a little while called Evolution Art Institute in Petaluma, where I learned how to do a bunch of different artwork. And so did my mom. She took some classes. We were maybe going to move to Petaluma. We flew to Maui, Hawaii. We were almost going to live there. So then we finally decided we would come to Woodby Island. That was my mom's choice. And it was actually quite, quite, quite traumatic for me to leave San Diego. I did not want to leave, although I had fun in Petaluma doing all that art stuff. But I think part of me thought I was going to go back to San Diego. I think part of me was in denial. But we moved to Woodby Island. And there was a lot of marriages and divorces and moving around. And maybe I'll dive into that some other time. Um... But it was very traumatic, and I heard the song Refugee, and that made me feel so much better in 1979 when I was 11 years old. Um, but what I did was I lived with my mom in the, the country, and then on weekends I saw my dad, who was the city guy, and so I got, I got a taste of both worlds. You know, going back and forth between my parents was a little bit difficult because they're so different. And they said things to me about each other that weren't very positive, and I felt like I was the messenger in between them. That was kind of negative, but let me just say that I was raised in a very creatively nurturing environment, which was a good thing, and I saw my dad on weekends in the city, and so when I graduated from high school, I got a bunch of art scholarships. I went to South Woodby High School, graduated in 1986. My mom put me in alternative schools and grade school off and on, and the kids picked on me in public school, but not in the sort of alternative hippie schools that she put me in. Nobody picked on anybody because the kids were really smart and uh, appreciated individuality. And whereas in the public school, kids were more into being conformists and following each other and copying each other and trying to be cool. Whereas in the alternative schools my mom put me into, it was cool to be yourself and to be unique and to be different. So be yourself no matter what they say is a line in a sting song that I like. 
And I quote that a lot. So, and then I'll say, self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. Let's see, self-abandonment, yeah. Self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. Authentic ejaculation of my soul, molten orange liquid glow, anger takes its toll, blowing status quo. So basically my parents uh, perhaps neglected me a bit, but they also nurtured me and raised me in a creative environment. So in 1986, when I graduated from high school, I moved to Seattle right away and I had scholarships and Pell Grants and I went to Seattle Central Community College 1986 to 89 and I studied graphic design there and got a two-year certificate from there as well as I did one year of like design and drawing and English and anthropology and general studies. I didn't get my AA degree, I almost did. And then I, let's see, I became a stripper, I became a nude model. I, in my 20s, I took off and hitchhiked through Mexico with a guy I met from Australia. And I danced at the Lusty Lady. And then I got into nude modeling for photographers and then nude modeling for artists and fine art modeling. Did some erotic modeling, mostly have done fine art modeling for the last 20 some years. And I started doing my TV show, Goddess Kring. Uh, I've been to Australia, I've been to Mexico, I've been to Europe about seven times. I've been to Italy and France and Austria, uh, Holland, various places. I love to travel. I love the art, the museums, the culture. I admire socialized medicine that they have. And my friend in Norway and England get good health care, no big medical bills. I love the mass transit. I wish we had solar panels and electric cars. Now, I think this is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. Thanks for tuning in. Please write me with questions or comments. Go to shannonkringen.com to find my email and write me with questions or comments. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And I also, this uh, video, I mean, this audio podcast, because I did a video, Goddess Kring video performance art show for 15 years on Seattle Public Access TV uh, that's on my some of those are on my YouTube channel so I have a Shannon Kringen YouTube station and you can w listen to these podcasts there 24-7 free you can listen on Mixcloud I think I'm going to put these on Bandcamp and it's also on Hollow Earth Radio so thank you for tuning in now here is Gus Kringen singing a song that he wrote. My dad, Shannon Kringen's dad, Gus Kringen. Here's his song. Check it out. Sing 
years were as once so loud and strong What went wrong? That was my dad, Gus Kringen. Again, you're listening to Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring radio podcast. And that was my dad, Gus Kringen, who wrote a song called Slow Down. Slow down, you're bound to break this heart of mine. And I like that song. And it was cool growing up with a dad who wrote some music. And I want to play another one called Feather. My dad wrote this song actually about me, kind of. I wanted a horse. I never got a horse as a kid. I had a uh, we had dog, a dog and we had cats throughout our lifetime, but I never had a horse. My grandmother had horses and I had a goat for a while. That was really fun in eighth grade. Well, my dad wrote this song because I said if I ever got a horse, I would name it Feather. And he thought that was funny because horses are so heavy and I wanted to name a horse Feather. I guess I was thinking of Indians and feathers and horseback riding and nature and all that. So... Feather by Gus Kringen, Shannon Kringen's dad. Like a soft and a gentle light snowfall She came to give a joyful song and a light of the eyes of, of a child And so you'll walk for my feather walk You are her horse to ride While she and her friends they walk or the field of grass up to the valley high and you can fly fly it's like the bird that is calling your name it's a game now at last Shannon's dreams will come true there's a horse and a place you can always run to now The thing you've waited oh so long For this precious day to come And the time that you would find your favorite friend And not pretend Think she's prancing down the road. She won't mind low. Winnie the Pooh can ride her too, and you'll wave as you go passing by. And so you'll walk for. 
Again, that was Feather by Gus Kringen, Shannon Kringen's dad, and that song touches me. That's very sweet. My dad wrote some beautiful lyrics, and he taught himself how to play guitar And by listening to lots of music. Again, he's very influenced by Gordon Lightfoot and Bob Dylan and, and uh, Simon and Garfunkel, the Everly Brothers, uh, Elvis. You know, he loves the Rolling Stones and and just really good music and um I grew up with, he played lots of good music in the house. My mom would play a lot of classical and fusion modern jazz and some rock and roll. My mom likes The Doors and Pink Floyd and all of that. And my dad would play a lot of um, rock and roll, a lot of, um, and some, cla- and some not classical, some big band jazz, some Frank Sinatra, Elvis, the Everly Brothers, Simon and Garfunkel, a lot of Joan Baez and Bob Dylan and a lot of Gordon Lightfoot. Lots and lots and lots of Gordon Lightfoot throughout my whole childhood. And of course, as a kid, I would poo-poo some of my parents' music. But actually, I'm really happy that I was exposed to such good music and have, I think, pretty good musical taste. And I think the next thing I want to do is play. I think that this show is airing. This is Goddess Kring podcast number, episode number six. Thanks for tuning in. This is airing on Thanksgiving Day, so why don't we give thanks for whatever we're grateful for. It's easy to freak out um, because of this uh, crazy election that just happened and the absurdity of the election and the fear that some people have. If you're a Mr. Um, Trump supporter, hey, congratulations. And if you're not like me, then I'm trying not to get too scared and freaked out by what's going to happen uh, I lo- I really love my Obamacare. I'm low income, so I have a really good deal on my health care. And I'm seeing a therapist every every other week. And I have dental and vision, and I can go to the doctor. And, you know, my friends in Europe, I'll go to the doctor, and there's no bill, and that's just normal. And, you know, I wish we had single-payer health care in this country. And I'm, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm all for single-payer health care. I'm all for uh, stricter gun control. I am for uh, protecting a woman's right to choose. I, I myself had an abortion 20 years ago. I uh, don't really want to talk a lot about that, but I'm happy that I had the choice, or grateful at least, not really happy, but grateful that I had the choice to do that because that's the choice that I chose. And I think every woman should be able to choose for themselves what's best for them pros and cons either way but it's really should be the law and so <laughs> i don't really want to talk a lot about all that stuff but i think um i feel like i want to remember to be thankful today on this thanksgiving day in the united states and if you're watching or listening from another country thanks for tuning in shannon kringen goddess kring i thought my throat would be better by now but i think my throat is still bothering me it doesn't really hurt, but my voice is kind of kind of dry and raspy, and it's usually not like this. <clears throat> so I am think I'm going to play another song. You just heard Slow Down and Feather by my dad, Gus Kringen. Those are recorded. Again, I apologize for the kind of not super high quality recording, but those songs were recorded on a, a little tape deck that my dad carried around with him in his car, and he recorded those. And I wish I had higher quality recordings, but I don't. But those are from like the, I think those are from about 1980 or maybe 1978 or something like that. I'm not really sure what year he recorded those in, but it's been a while. And I think next up we're going to hear a song called, 
I think it's Shannon by Finn McCool. Uh, they wrote a song. Finn McCool is a band, I think, that is no longer together, but they wrote a song uh, partly in response to my show. Last week I played Howlin' Hobbit's song, Goddess Kring, that he wrote in response to my show. And this week I am playing my dad, Gus Kringen's songs. And now I'm going to play Finn McCool, a song called Shannon. This is kind of in response to my Goddess Kring TV show. This guy wrote a song about that and his response to my whole Shannon Kringen style. Thanks for tuning in, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. To groove now, you got your top down, coconut oil. Okay, buddy's there. All right, two, three, four. <laughs> So that was Finn McCool doing a song called Shannon. I have to say that it's an honor that um, I've had people write songs about my my TV show, Goddess Kring, that I had on for 15 years. 
where it was kind of a video diary and I just got back from a walk. I think next I want to play a song by Joel Underwood called Cringe. This is a song that he wrote in response to my show Goddess Kring. Um, I used to share a lot about my personal challenges with depression. Um, I have thought about suicide throughout my lifetime, but I have never attempted it. And right now I don't feel that way at all. I feel very, very happy to be alive. But there are times when I've been very honest about my struggle with depression and anxiety and self-esteem issues. And um, the best message I'll say about Temple Grandin is that she talks about how the world needs all kinds of people and it's easy to get caught up in what your problems are and to fixate on trying to fix your flaws or feel guilt or shame or fear about your flaws. And it's important to remember um, to find the gifts, you know, to find it, it's it's not good to be in denial about what your problems are and what your what's traumatized you in your life. But I've found that the more I do therapy, the more I realize there's there's so many gifts. There's so much, you know, like the wounded healer. There's so much about, like my childhood, for instance, you know, I was kind of neglected in some ways, but I was also very fortunate in other ways. My parents perhaps treated me more like a friend than a daughter in a traditional sense, perhaps, but I don't want to want to um, focus on that. I want to talk about how I feel, but... Um, let's just say that, that the, there's a silver lining in that, that I've learned things when somebody goes through pain and trauma, they learn things and it makes them stronger and it's easier to have empathy for other people who are suffering when you have suffered yourself. So when I say wounded healer, I mean that. And so it's also, um, the things about my childhood that were good was that I was raised by sensitive parents who taught me to think for myself and I also learned how to be really strong and independent because when you're around people that are busy with their own thing you have to figure out your thing so I will say that music and art has also grounded me and my job as a figure model also grounds me so I think next I will play the song by Joel Underwood which is called Cringe and I think he also has on, on uh, SoundCloud, I just looked him up, I googled him, so Joel Underwood, look him up if you're curious about him after you hear this, he's on, Sa he's on not SoundCloud, yeah, SoundCloud, right, is that what I said? I'm not sure, but look him up, Joel Underwood, he is a songwriter based in Seattle, and this is a song he wrote about Goddess Kring called Cringe, here we go, you're listening to Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen. Someday, yeah. mm, you break down, probably 
make me like an earthquake sound on my TV. I don't even know you, and you get laid there, but it's just too good to me. Crying, contemplating, hating, and ending it all. I'd reach through the screen, but it feels like crying. Blind lines you tie up, and high lines you call. When you break down, publicly like an earthquake sounding on my TV. I don't even know you, and you get like this. But it's just too good to miss. You break down publicly like an earthquake sounding on my TV. I don't even know you, and you get like this. But it's just too good to miss. You break down like an earthquake sounding. I don't even know you. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Cranberry Moondrops, Cranberry Moon Dream, High Bloom Through the Roots, In Cahoots, Sliding Doors, Eyes Adore, Ocean Beam, Come Clean, Come Clean, Manifesting Dreams, Black fire feather rain, strain the stream of consciousness again. Volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers filter rain. Down the drain in chains again. Cranberry moon drops, cranberry moon dream. High bloom through the roots, in cahoots, sliding doors, eyes adore, ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams, black fire feather rain, strain the stream of consciousness again, volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers, Filter rain down the drain in chains again. Cranberry moon drops, cranberry moon dream. High bloom through the roots in cahoots. Sliding doors, eyes adore. Ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams, black fire feather rain, strain the stream of consciousness again, volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers filter rain, down the drain in chains again. Barefoot Coconut by Shannon Kringen. Success through hard work, not luck. Wild bison roaming freely, now extinct. Cattle herded, particular patterns of work. Muscle building, protection, manifesting. Not through external forces, from the inner self. Structure ruptured, recapitulated. Molded shapes of clay, cuddling. Touch vitamin D, transformation, stationary leaves, upheaval mid evil, treated deserving worth, here to fly the earth, buckets of freedom, embraced grace, 
Atlantic, Atlantis, Atlantic, Atlantis, send us feeding fish, food scraps, no traps, rocking 46 feet, roaming home, home is roaming, stacks of water seed, leading dreams, burn fat, building muscle, focused long concentration, penetration, no more alienation, alleviation. Edit the letting, sweeping clean, weeded green. Bahamian Morphic Field by Shannon Kringen. Eyes locked, several beats of heart, contrasting monotheistic beyond the duality of heaven and hell. There's an invisible world of form. Equal weight is given to silence and sound, waiting at the gate skating at the state of bliss, interlacing geranium, painting titanium, clean slate island, beyond rocky paradox, curling the locks, realizing the hawks are taking stock of what the humans do. Due to Earth's equanimous, multi-dimensional shadow spell, Fukushima dwell, Swell to wave, swelling melon cave. Are you brave? Flying turquoise, painted bodies head to toe in the amber glow of knowing. The show must go on. Unwind the tide, sliding in line, silhouetted time, mining creative minds, lighting torso divine. Gluten freed, cleared of fog in mind, shedding long ago skins for a window of play, no longer delayed, displaying full spectrum chroma, soaking in aromas, sensing serendipity, dancing this synchronicity, road less traveled, indeed, water seed, sprouting, rerouting, Encountering collaboration, adoration, elated by the vast ship of friendship, relationship. What a trip! Dipping into the golden retrieved life. Kali be gone, Kali be gone, Kali be gone. Tether no more, tether no more, more, more. Names that rhyme no longer on time. Drone of machine, comfort me to dream. Lands of sand, strand me solid. Solar twinkle, Solar twinkle sprinkle, sprinkle, fertile, fertile Gumby smiles, Gumby smiles, Gumby smiles. Eyes tired but tingling, but tingling happy. happy. Letting subconscious, Letting subconscious guide, guide the slide the guitar, guitar me. me. Twangy, Twangy spicy twists twist of line. Green opal, green opal blue, blue. rust crackling off, off the mark, the mark, the mark. Crispy, rocks. crispy rocks, mark the mark groove, the interlude, intertube, Gumby smiles, Gumby smiles, Gumby smiles. Now, that was some Goddess Kring, Kring Speak poetry that you just heard. And next, I want to play a track, that an instrumental track that I did with somebody. I'm on piano, and my friend Nibby Nebulous is on guitar. So here's more Goddess Kring Radio. Thanks for tuning in. Please write me with questions or comments. Just find my email, shannonkringen.com. 
Go to my contact page, find my email, or just Google me, Shannon Crink and Goddess Crane. You'll find my email. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the music. So that was my friend and I, me on piano, he on guitar. And next I'm going to play you a track of me on the guitar. I took the guitar, I mostly play the piano, kind of more improv style. Uh, I take the piano, as a kid actually I took lessons and I really loved playing the piano and I took lessons for a couple years and then we had to sell the piano kind of abruptly and that kind of messed that up and then I never really got back into it but that was as a kid it was kind of a stressful thing but um, I sometimes wonder if I might want to get back into playing piano maybe take some more lessons and, and relearn I used to be able to read music and I've written a couple songs and um, well here's a track of me where I took my friend's acoustic guitar laid it flat on my lap and sort of played it like a slide guitar slash piano keyboard it's really fun so this is Goddess Kring Shani Kring and thanks for tuning in
Forgive me while I kiss the sky. Forgive me while I kiss the sky. Forgive me while I kiss the sky. Crumple still skin. Crumple still skin. Amazed at the orange mount. Crumple still skin. Stripe there. Volt this. Volty rinsing it off. Undulate more melted. Zoom away. Zoom away. Crumple still skin. Crumple still skin. Flipped. Flipped me ball. Lavender fuzz. Lavender fuzz. That's too foxy, lavender buddy. Lavender me. Could you, would you sequin shoes? And the slipper. And the slipper. Wedding slipper. Wedding slipper. Slip on painted Slip spaceship on painted top, spaceship organ top. leaf, organ ball whisker ball on the spaceship on flower the spaceship with the gray on gray. The gray, on gray. Barely spaceship buds, passion flower in the hour of waves, and the sunshade shadow drum is washed clean, mixed with water. Banana slug with crumple still skin. Crumple still skin. Amazed at the orange mount. Crumple still skin. Stripe there. Volt this. Volty rinsing it off. Undulate morph melded. Zoom away. Zoom away. Ride as the water trickles and the droplet festival takes place for pop stars everywhere with ladybug yellow and green drops, flower paints, and warped fireworks in the silo, amazed at the space fire with digging up and eating your green. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Amazed at the space fire, space fire, with digging up and eating your green, your green. The melon was Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring.